Hello and welcome to Pay Entry's Affordable Care Act Auditing ACA Status Presentation. In this presentation we will discuss the Employee ACA Status Audit Utility. The information discussed in this presentation is an interpretation of some of the components of the Affordable Care Act. You should confirm with either your legal advisor or an ACA expert how this information may affect your organization. To access the audit utility from Pay Entry's main menu, select Company Setup. From the Company Setup menu, select the tab EEACA Status Audit. This utility is designed to help you audit the information that you have entered for each employee to ensure that you are coding them correctly. You should run this utility after you've done your status bulk update. We will now go through a couple of examples of running the status audit so you can get a feel of how to do it. The idea of the audit is to sort through your employee populations to come up with common denominators. To start off with, we're going to choose whether or not we want to see variable hour employees. It will default to the non-variable hour employees. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Next is the average hours. Do you want to measure the employees by month or by week? I'm going to leave it at 30 hours per week. Next is the effective date. Since I'm just starting in 2014 right now, I'm going to use the effective date of January 1st, 2014. Once I enter that date, then you will see my measurement period will change and it will start from January 1st, 2014 through the end of that year. Plus, it automatically started filling in my employees. Next, I can do further sorting by choosing certain higher date ranges. For right now, since I'm initially loading all of the information for statuses, I'm going to leave it at the defaults which will gather all of my new hires for the entire database. Next is the ACA Earnings Code Group. As we mentioned in a previous video, you should set up an Earnings Code Group to capture your ACA service hours. I have mine set up and it is called ACA. I will choose those and thus when it calculates the average hours is going to do so using this code group. Next I can filter even finer by having additional two filters. If I click on the drop down menu I can see the different choices for my filtering. I am going to choose the ACA status and I'm going to select all full time employees for my ACA status. Next I can do an additional filter. It currently defaults to all non-terminated employees. I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to click display to refresh the data. And then I'm going to scroll down so you can see the calculate button. Once I click on calculate, it will fill in the average hours for the employees and also give me the projected ACA status. To review this information, you want to take a look at the ACA status column. This is their current status in the system and compare that to the projected ACA status. If there's any changes, you will see them in the new ACA status. The new status defaults to the projected status, however, you have the capability of overwriting it if you'd like. Also, as you go through your employee population, you want to start looking for any warning messages. The warning messages will highlight the employee in a different color. As I scroll through, you will see that we have a couple warnings. A couple are in orange and then one in blue. The legend is as follows. If it's a blue font, 
it is just an informational message. An orange font indicates a warning and then a red indicates that there is a condition that is causing an error. To view the messages, you want to go to the column that says Audit Results, find the employee that you want to review, and click View. In this case, for Derek Shepherd, it indicates that there are two warnings. He had a break in service and it gives you the date, and then it also tells you to review the employee's pay history record. You want to go through each message in detail to ensure that there are no changes that need to be made to the employee status as a result of this message. You can click OK to close the message out. And if I scroll to the bottom, I can click on Save Changes, and it will let me know that the information has been updated. And just click OK. Then you will continue on auditing the rest of the employee population. Since I picked non-variable hour employees last time, non-variable and full-time, I'm going to leave this one at non-variable and change it to part-time. In reviewing the part-time employees, we note that we have part-time status for all of these employees, but note the ACA projected status is full-time. Their average hours are way above the 30 hours per week. So this is indicating that we need to change the ACA status to full-time. If I scroll down, continue seeing quite a number of employees that will need to change to full-time. Then towards the bottom, I have part-time employees who will remain part-time according to their average hours. Some are in orange which indicates that there is a warning message for them. If I click on Pablo Picasso's message, it says that he had a break in service. Again, the orange messages are warnings. Not necessarily a problem, just could be informational. It might be that your part-time employees do have breaks in service periodically, and where they have weeks where they do not get paid. What you want to do in this case is go through and review the information on each employee, especially those that are changing from one status to another, to ensure that that is the status you want them to have. Once you have reviewed everyone's status and you are satisfied with the new ACA status, then scroll to the bottom and click on Save Changes. When you click on Save Changes, it will give you the message that an update has been completed and all of the employees whose status was changing from part-time to full-time will have been updated with the new effective date of 1-1-2014. Click OK to complete. To double check this information, let's go in to this first employee, Joseph Tribbiani, and check out his record. If I go back to the main menu, go to Employee Information, I'm going to sort by ID number and pick Joseph Tribbiani. From Joseph's screen, I'm going to the ACA tab, and now I see that his record says full-time as of 1-1-2014. If I click on the details, it indicates that he is not variable or seasonal, nor does he have premium credit or is exempt from the mandate. Return to the employee and return to main menu.
This concludes our Pay Entry Affordable Care Act Auditing ACA Status presentation.